Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So I want to dedicate this video to answering some questions that I got in the comments. Um, I guess I'll just do that for this daily update video. So um, a question I got is like, I think I get this question all the time, like how, how should, what's like the most effective way to farm? I think I've answered this before and um, I guess I'll, I'll go into detail like all the possible ways to like why you should farm farm something um, if you're only worried about time like say for example you want to get something to six star before tomorrow or something like that um, the most effective way like the most time efficient way would obviously if there's an XP event you would farm on the XP map um, or you would farm then but uh, the, the best way to farm is all obviously to go into the the EXP stages like you wanna you wanna the stage with bonus XP and also stages that you have um, a strong elemental advantage against and also you want to farm on extreme mode like combine all, all three of those together and if there's an event you can combine that together too combine all those things things together you will it'll yield the best results um, I think it's relatively simple you want to use monsters that you want to use three like strong attacker type monsters that can do lots of damage, and then just your one monster that that you're trying to get to max level. If your one monster is an attacker, I would recommend you gem that um, attacker up first because he's also going to be able to deal some damage just in case um, nothing else dies. And if he's like a really really strong attacker, there's a chance that he's also able to like kill everyone, um, you know, with one one AOE. Then you you definitely want to gem him up as much as as possible. Like say for example, like when I was farming my Dark Thor, it was really really fast. Um, because I, I had him already gemmed up, like completely gemmed up, and he was doing a lot of damage. So, um, you know, definitely do gem up your, your attackers, and also, um, you want to use monsters that have really, really strong, strong nukes. Like, if I do a run of just randomly, like, if I do a random run, of, oh my god, shit, I forgot to take out my Dark Thor. I was supposed to use my light Loki. I guess I'll just do one random run. Like, say for example, uh, if uh, I was farming my Dark Thor, like I can just go up, go in, and uh, you know, one shot most monsters. Like this. I think my Mona wasted her attack because she attacked too late. Th this isn't like the most most effective way um, to farm the, the best possible way would be if you had monsters on siphoning set and you and that monster also has like morale boost um, I think the ideal farming team would be like three dark monas on siphoning because then you could you can nuke like really really fast through the map um, but it's perfectly fine as, as you can see if I just use four attackers they basically anything that they touch um, gets immediately one shot and then now that my Dark Mona has a full full bar, she's going to use her, her AoE on this turn, and it's going to kill everything. So, um, you know, you want to be able to stack up your, your, your AoEs as much as possible, and as, as soon as you nuke, you kill everything, and, um, and that's pretty much it. So it's like a minute or so per, per run, so it's, it's definitely not that bad. I mean, the, my farming team isn't ideal. Um, I'm using two aggressors, like, I don't think monsters really need to be that tanky, you can use, basically use, like, full attackers. Um, but they're still strong enough, like, my aggressors are strong enough to still one-shot anything they touch, so, um, you know, I can just, I can just use them without worry. But you definitely want to use monsters that have, like, morale boost, cause, so they can use their AoE, because if they use their AoE, they kill everything, and you move on to the next stage. They also get blue, um... SP if they use their AoE, so they they gain SP back, and then they nuke again, and um, you know rinse and repeat, and you you will be able to farm through stages relatively fast. I don't really use monsters that have elemental advantage because my monsters are strong enough to basically, um, you know, since they're dark, they're strong enough to to kill all these in one hit. Um, I don't really need to like. Dark is elemental neutral against everything, so I, I don't really need to switch my team around. Doesn't matter which which map I'm farming on. I can basically always use the same team. So yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, it for farming. Like there really isn't isn't any any like crazy crazy uh, um, you know 
more effective way to do it. You obviously, if you go through the maps, if you can farm on Slumbling, Slumbling City, it would be the best for XP because the further you go on stages, the more XP it actually gives. So if I farm on Star Sanctuary, it would give me more XP than stages on Magma Craig, and um, you know, and so forth. If you go down the maps, you know, um, the 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 I think the other thing is. Um, if you're farming for XP, you definitely do want to just farm on, on extreme mode because it's, it has the highest efficiency and you have a higher chance to clear this faster. Um, I'm not sure how much XP it would take for you to, for, for one normal run to equal one extreme, possibly three. But even if it takes three, it's still not worth it because if you count, take into account the loading time every single time you go in and the time it takes for you to like, for it to like, you know, do that little gym animation at the very end. Um, you're basically wasting another, you know, 20 to 30 seconds that you could, you could be using to to actually farm. So you definitely, um, for time efficiency, you do want to also farm on, on extreme mode. Um, the there's actually a reason why you would farm on normal mode. It's only if you're um, you don't really want to farm up any monster and you're just trying to capture whatever monsters. Maybe it's for an event. Maybe you're trying to do it for, you know, some mass fusion. Then you can farm on normal mode and. Um, I would still recommend farming the XP stage because the gold stage doesn't really give you that much bonus. So you, you still farm on the XP stage, um, get some bonus XP for, you, you know, you can just farm up some random monster that you don't really care about. You're trying to slowly level to to max um, just so you don't waste any, any potential bonus XP. And for this, you don't even need that strong monsters. You basically want monsters that can get their, their AoE as fast as possible. So you want to stack like a shit ton of morale boosters. And um, and clear through normal normal mode really fast to to farm up uh, you know rare monsters and exotic monsters. So that's pretty much it for farming. The other question I got is um, regarding gem sets. I actually never made a video talking about this. I think in the future I definitely do want to make a full like gemming guide that I would um, you know I would talk about every single monster, how I would gem that like not every single type of monster, not every single monster, but every single type of monster. Um, possibly in the game and how I would gem that monster up and um, you know talk about all the situations and stuff but the question I got is actually about about um, using gem sets and actually has to do, do with aggressors but I'll, I'll use this um, chance to, to talk about gem sets in general for all attack type monsters including aggressors um, now the biggest thing is always Ruin versus, um, you know, like Ruin versus Valor or Ruin versus Intuition or Ruin versus, you know, Life for HP Aggressors or Ruin versus um, Protection for Defense Aggressors. Um, Ruin gives 40% extra crit damage while Valor, Valor, Life and Protection both give 20%. Um, Intuition also gives 20% crit rate, I'll also talk a little bit about this. but. Um, Oh, just take an attack, random attacker for example, like uh, something without any utility. Should I use a dark monster? All right, uh, like him for example. He's a he's a defender type. He has a decent amount of base attack. If I was to try to gem him up for full damage, um, I would do ruin double attack because he is a dark type monster. Uh, ruin crit rate double attack because he's a dark type monster, so he definitely wants to make use of this bonus 50% crit rate, so uh, crit damage. So you want his crit rate up as high as possible. Um, having crit rate on a dark monster would basically give it just gives you free damage because of his bonus 50% crit damage. Um, and use double attack because you want to optimize the amount of attack and, and crit damage. You want to uh, have a balance between the two. I don't know the exact number, but for most monsters, especially dark type monsters, um, highest attack would be, you know, crit rate, double attack on, on most dark type monsters. It would give you around, um, wait, my math is bad. Let me, let me just, let me just sneak a peek at this. Gives you 68 at a, a six star gem with plus 15, um, at plus 15. A six star attack gem at, at plus 15 um, gives you 68%. This is the same for HP and defense, but all gives you 68. If you take a look at any any HP or defense gem, um, they would give you 
68% as well. See, this one has 68%. So, um, if you use two slots, it would equal to 136% bonus attack. And then um, your, you kind of want to have the same amount of crit damage. I think I heard this somewhere or somewhere on a Reddit post. Um, but I, I haven't really done the exact math. But you want to have like kind of the, the same same range. So if you have a ruin set with 100% crit damage, it would equal to 140% crit damage, which is kind of the around the same same mark. So it's it, it actually is like a perfect balance, and that's why dark monsters are so good because um, just with one crit rate and double attack gen, you would have the the optimal amount of um, of of like damage that you can you can you can dish out. Um, the the other thing is uh, crit. Crit damage, if you have high crit rate, is more effective than stacking attack or HP or defense if you're aggressors, um, if you just want the highest amount of damage possible. Now, this is very, very situational because for aggressors, you don't always want to just want the highest amount of attack. Sometimes you want to, that monster to be able to, um, you know, tank damage as well because they since the, it's kind of like uh, wasting their, their potential. Like take the, the Light Victoria, for example. If you had, if you had her on, um, on uh, you know, double defense crit rate, it would kind of waste, the crit rate slot would kind of waste her potential for, for, for defense. Um, because since she's an HP aggressor, you can make her really, really tanky and really, really um, hit you know, do damage at the same time. So the the goal of the Dark Victoria isn't, or Light Victoria isn't to just um, dish out damage. It's also to be tanky at the same time, and that's why she's so good in in arena and stuff. And um, like the way I gemmed her right now, you can see I used Intuition to boost her her crit rate up, um, and then I used Triple Defense to to make her her defense uh, you know as high as humanly possible. The, the reason for this is, I, I think this is a pretty good good set, like I think she's gemmed relatively well. Obviously she doesn't have a lot of resist, but if, you, if you're if you not using her for like PvP, it doesn't really really matter that much. Originally I planned her for to use her for Golem's B10, so this is the way I, I gemmed her up. I didn't really care that much about resist. Um, for highest efficiency on like... A, on on uh like if you want a good balance of tankiness and attack you definitely want to play to the aggressor's strength which is you know in this case defense so the ideal set i would say for the light victoria wouldn't to be wouldn't wouldn't be to use a um intuition or a ruin set it would instead be be to use a a protection set because you can also get bonus defense and that bonus defense makes her even tankier and it also um, increases her her damage you know damage output because of because how she scales with defense um, this isn't always a hundred percent there are some cases where like you would in order to to sacrifice like you could sacrifice a bit of tankiness on her for a lot more damage um, say for example, you have like three perfect ruin gems that are all defense and have like, you know, um, high crit damage and high crit rate. You would use that set instead. Instead of if you have the same exact gems with the same exact main stat and substats on a protection set, you would use the ruin set instead. The reason for this is because um, ruin gems it's is actually um, has higher value. Than, than some of the other sets because it gives 40% extra um, crit damage. So if you're using a a 40%, you know, if you're, say for example, you had like the perfect substats, you had like, uh, you know, like 20% crit damage, 20% crit rate on every single, every single gem. Um, and actually no, well, actually, it depends. It depends on how you define perfect substats. I would say the perfect substat would be, would be twenty percent, like you know, like twenty something percent uh, crit rate, and then have one of the the stats roll like all the stats roll like seven point five defense. Um, that would give you a bonus of around, I think the highest amount of crit rate is like 30, 30, 
37.5 is the highest possible amount of crit rate. So with three gems that have 37.5, wait, no, that would be that would be going overboard. Um, if you had two gems that had over 70.5 or 37.5, um, yes, 37.5 uh, crit rate, you add those together, it would be exactly 70. Five, yeah, seventy-five percent crit rate, um, and then you bo add the bonus of twenty percent from the Light Victoria, which would equal ninety-five percent, and then you have another gem with seven point five percent crit rate, which would go, um, you know, put your crit rate over a hundred percent, and and then your other two, your your last gem have it roll like, you know, the highest amount of defense possible, which is also thirty-seven point five. And um, and if that's set, like if you had those substats, um, and you could choose between having the exact same mains, and, and they're all defense, like all three of the gems are defense. Um, so you have a bonus of you know sixty-eight times three, which is two hundred and four percent. Yes, is that right? Yeah, that is right. 204% um, extra defense. Like, would you rather take 20% extra defense or 40% crit damage? In that case where you have like 100% crit rate, you would still you would take the crit damage. And the 20% um, extra defense compared to the 204% is actually not all that much. So, you know, if you... In that case, like, if you want the highest... Uh, you can... You can get a much much higher damage output if you if it was on a ruin set compared to if it was on a protection set. Um, you would be sacrificing 20% defense, which is a little bit of tankiness, um, versus like 40% crit damage, which would actually give you quite a lot more damage because of you know your crit rate scaling and also um, your you know your already really really high high amount of defense that you have. Um, now that that is like the ideal situation, and gems don't you really don't really work like that. You don't always have all the perfect substats. Like it's near impossible for that to happen. So majority of the time, you probably wouldn't want your Light Victoria on um, on a ruin set, and instead her ideal gem set would be to use a protection set if you can you know put it together. Um, but I do think that gem substats are actually a lot more important, and that they they kind of uh, influence the way you would you would you know gem a monster with a specific gem set gem set. Like for example, the the scenario I mentioned before, where you have a hundred percent crit rate. Like if you have a high amount of crit rate, it's obviously more ideal for you to use a a uh, a ruin set, you know, instead of a instead of an intuition set. But gems are tied to their set, so it's like. It's mo mostly about the individual gems. It's not. It's it's not really all that much about the set. It's just that if you can happen to put them together, and they all somehow add together um, to make all the subset you need, then you use them. And that's that's all I can really say about gems. Like that's the that's the bottom line, really. <laughs> it it really just has to do with um, the type of gem set it is, and the the, the substats that are on the gem, because. Um, it's really all situational, like you, depending on the grade of the gem, like the grade meaning like the, I, I don't mean like the actual star grade, um, most of the things I'm talking about are six star gems, cause like when you get to late game, most of your gems are probably all six star, um, you wouldn't be using five star or four star gems all that much early game like when you're using like four star gems the the sets don't really matter all that much um, and when you're using five star gems like it it really has to do with the substats and the 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 type of gem it is um, a lot of the p times when people use five star gems is to complete a set that they they can't complete with a six star gem like for for example I'm using this one I don't have a well I didn't have a defense um, gem I could use for this slot so I I uh, used a five-star one for her. Um, yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it. That's that's just the bottom line. Like, there's there's uh, 
there's really not all that much to, to say about about this. Um, I don't think I can play through every, or I can talk through every single possible theoretical scenario, but, um, you know, general rule is, um, dark monsters, like, aggressors, crit rate, double defense, um, you know, utility monsters, you, you usually, depending on their stats, like, it also has to depend on the monster stats as well, like, utility monsters, like, say, for example, they have higher base defense, and lower base HP, they would scale better with defense, so you would put, like, two defense, one HP, or something like that, um, instead of two HP, one defense, for, like, just tanky utility monsters, um, and then there's, like, hybrid monsters that you also need them to do attack at the same time, so you would do, like, attack defense, you know, um, attack defense HP, or something like that, and, yeah, that's, I think that's, that's pretty much it, I think, I think that hopefully that, that, um, answers your question, and the other thing is, I, I'm going to summon now, um, I have a few eggs I want to summon, and I think that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm sorry, I don't have that much shit, alright? I, I really don't. I'm like, borderline free to play. I just buy those, uh... I just buy those packs that like... You know, those 15 day or 30 day packs? That give me like, 100 astrogens every day. And I use those 100 astrogems to farm. That's pretty much it. Nice, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about the Medusas. I kind of regret feeding all, away all my other Medusas, because I'm, I'm thinking of building my, uh, my Dark Medusa. Oh nice, I got a Jelly. Oh nice, I got a Monkey variant, that's, that's actually pretty good. I can use him for my Dark Monkey, but it only has 25%. I don't think it has a chance, it might have a chance to be a bonus. Oh, I have a Water Tiger now. I don't think I've pulled this monster ever. Well, at least I got one Lightning, so that's that's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, that that Dark Tiger is a or Water Tiger is a new monster. I never never got this monster before. Um, I need to I need to check the Monkey's Leader skill. So this has 25%. I think the, bo the the maximum amount of attack you can have on on the monkey is 30. So that's probably the lowest roll. Uh, it's not that much of a deal, like big deal, because the monkeys are farmable. So I can always just save that monkey for like a future rebirth when I when I want to feed like variants to try to get a variant. This isn't the right place to check. It was the astro guide. I'll just check the Dark Monkey. Yeah, the, the highest amount of attack power for leader skill is 30%, so that was the actually the lowest possible roll. But I think it's still, it's still nice to keep him. You never know. Maybe the, maybe the next rebirth is Lord Beth. And we can, we can get a Dark Beth. You know, if you look at all the Beths, their skills are like, um, they give bonus attack versus the element that they're against. Or is that only for the wood one? No, they, they have like, elemental advantage against a strong, like, the, the opposite element. So it would be pretty sick if the Dark Beth was like, 100% extra attack against light. That would be insanely good for clan battles. It would also be really, really good for uh, for Dragon's B10 as a as a nuker. Their set, their stats aren't too good. I'm thinking of all the possible monsters that can be rebirth next month. Monsters that only have three star, like there are only three stars, um, and don't have four star counterparts. Maybe the mini cat. Maybe they can give us a. I don't think they're gonna give an active healer to people for, like an active light dark healer for people for rebirth, because light dark healers have have a advantage of thirty percent extra, extra attack. 
There's actually quite a few possible monsters it can be. It can be like the Shellys, the the Bets, these crocodile things. It can be um It can be lats, wait, but lats have two star counterparts, so I don't think they can have four star counterparts. It can be a candling as well. You know? Or these birds that nobody use. Like I've never seen this before. I've never seen anyone use this monster before. Like, I don't even know what skills it has. Okay, pretty 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 low activation rate. Alright, anyways, um, that's pretty much it for, for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.